Hey, hey everybody. In this video, I want to talk about the distinction between coder, software developer, software engineer, and architect. So my opinion here is based on my decades of experience going back to the 90s as a professional coder, developer, and architect. Let me just say that some of these distinctions are really not that important because they're arbitrary. You go to company A and they'll think that a software engineer is this and a coder is that, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of times the terms are interchangeable with the exception of architect. So coder is just a generic term for anybody who writes code. They could be an HTML5, CSS, web designer, if you will, front end guy, or it could be somebody who, uh, who writes very advanced Java code and is developing gaming engines. Those could be, uh, all those people, are coders. That said, the title coder implies entry level, implies junior, implies somebody new to the game. A senior developer, the top developer at a company is also a coder. But as I said, coder also means, you know, a little HTML, a little CSS, you're a coder. So a programmer or a developer is a different thing. So I kind of look at programmer as somebody who writes with a programming language, a proper, whether it be JavaScript, C, C++, C Sharp, Python, PHP, whatever. Programmers actually use a programming language. For me, a developer is a little bit different from a programmer, but again, there's overlap and there's bleed, it depends who you talk to. So for me, a programmer would be, could be a developer, but it could also be somebody who just writes Python scripts to automate some back office operations, some server operations. On the other hand, a proper developer is somebody who actually creates software, somebody who creates a system. It could be a standalone system, it could be a web app, it could be a mobile app. That's a developer, they're developing a system. Whereas a programmer, can be a developer, but there also could be just somebody who just, as I said, will write simple scripts to automate server processes. That's the example I like to use in this particular video. So what's a software engineer? A software engineer implies potentially a higher level, or a software engineer, you might consider them a senior developer. They will uh, decide on the choices in terms of what technologies, what architectures to implement to get a particular job done. The software engineer will make those decisions, pass that on to the programmers, to the developers, or the developers will do each of their, their particular roles. So you might have front-end developers using React or Vue, you might have back-end developer who's using uh, Django or Python, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Finally, you have the architect. The architect is somebody who actually designs the systems uh, in a, uh, who has designed a system, rather. So for example, I've done all these things, of course, and um, I've been an architect. I've architected my own MVC framework where I made a very high level design considerations. I'm not talking about visual design, I'm talking about architectural or engineering, engineered related design, in terms of how I was gonna implement my framework based on real world use when I was freelancing and doing a lot of work in that space. So my, architectural skills came down to uh, actually building out the raw framework. So I built an MVC-based framework uh, on Java. So it's Java, Pojo, Servlets, JSPs. I made heavy use of a few design patterns, um, something people would call dependency injection. Of course, I used it through something called a Servlet, the Servlet filters. I use uh, Facade a lot. The choices of those design patterns were architectural choices. And when you do design and architect a system from scratch, as I did, it gives you a lot of perspective in terms of how to design systems. Now, fortunately, I had designed systems outside of software in my previous business, where I used to design central filtration systems. I used to plumb together all kinds of uh, tanks with uh, piping and put them through filtration systems, you know, UV, and carbon, and particulate systems, et cetera. Uh, that's more of an engineering role, but I still was able to take that engineering experience, not that I'm an engineer, but I just did it, and brought that into software development and later on architecture. 
just a little sidebar here, a little tangent. What you find when you're architecting things, you find that um, the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle really plays a major role in this. And that's the 80-20 where that tells you that 80% of your cost are found in 20% of the operations. So uh, I found that to be the case with uh, web app development and software development in general. So what I would do is in my framework, what I did was to automate as much as possible that crucial 20% of the app that was taking up 80% of my time. What you find is when you try to uh, take care of that last 20% to try to automate that, your complexity in the code, in the architecture increases exponentially. So I kind of like the 80-20 rule for that design. I'd rather have an MVC framework that's easy to deploy and implement that solves 80% of the time consuming problems than trying to solve everything because then you see architecture Architectural complexity just explodes. But anyway, that's another story. So there you go. Coder, software developer, programmer, excuse me, coder, programmer, developer, software engineer, architect. It has a lot to do with level of skill. Although some people would argue they could become software architects without being developers. I think that's nonsense. I saw somebody do that where they couldn't write code, but they decided that they were architects and they architected themselves into a bankruptcy. Uh, they didn't know what they were doing. Before you can become an architect, I would argue, software architect, you have to have written a lot of code. You have to have an engineer law stuff before you can have the, uh, the audacity to want to architect something from scratch. That said, there's also the issue of personal skill. Aptitude. I've seen people who are brilliant programmers, but when it came to architecture, disasters, absolute disasters. So you have to figure out in your career what kind of technology individual you are, whether you're going to be a coder, meaning low level, or you want to graduate into software developer. Maybe later on you want to get into uh, the engineering aspect of it. Maybe you want to get into architecture later on. It all depends. Now, that being said, and I think I mentioned this early on in the video, each and every organization you go to, you talk to different people, you're going to get different opinions about the nuances of these different titles and their roles. So I wouldn't get too hung up on it. My advice to you is just to get your fundamentals down, start writing good code, start building simple little projects, and then you'll figure out where your likes and dislikes are, where your strengths lie. You may find yourself to be brilliant at UI and UX design, which is a highly valuable skill set, or you may find yourself great with uh, writing really efficient code, where maybe you might want to get into uh, data analysis and AI in that case. It really depends on what you want to do. There's so many different opportunities in the development space that you should be able to find a particular niche, a particular specialization that suits your personality type.